Before starting, I want to tell you a story that happened to my husband and myself yesterday, and it was a very encouraging thing that happened. I like to go walking with my husband, and yesterday we were out for one of our walks, and one of the neighbors were, were out, and they were doing some landscaping in their yard. And we noticed them, so we went over, and we were talking to them for a little bit, and then this lady comes along, and she stops. She jumps out of her car, and she's probably in her 30s, and she says, I don't mean to interrupt you guys or anything. She goes, I'm a historian, and my name is Esther. Right there, I about fell over. I'll tell you what, I don't ever hear anybody's name being called Esther. I, I don't know if I've ever known anybody named Esther in my life. And so when she said that, it just brought encouragement to my heart because the book of Esther in the Bible is just such an encouragement to me because the key verse that everybody normally thinks about in Esther is chapter 4 verse 14 and it says for such a time as this and really what that means to me is everybody has such a time this is there's a purpose in all of our lives for something that the Lord has given each one of us a purpose and, and that's why it's just such an, an encouraging thing to me and today we are going to be in the book of Esther turn to chapter 4 Today Esther's faced with a decision that's going to not only affect her own life, but the lives of others. And we're going to read just the two key verses here, and that's verses 13 and 14. If you would stand for the reading of God's Word, we're in chapter 4 again of the book of Esther, verses 13 and 14. It says, And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You may be seated. Thank you. Let's do a little backtracking here and see how we got to this point. Okay, we'll, we'll recall in history that Esther was chosen as queen in place of Vashti. She married uh, Xerxes. She was raised by Mordecai, who was her cousin, and Mordecai works in the kingdom. Well, there's a man also who works in the kingdom. His name is Haman, and he hates Jewish people. He had the king drinking one evening, and he tricked him into signing a decree. Well, this decree was to kill all the Jewish people in the whole kingdom of Persia. Mordecai gets wind of this decree. He's out at the king's gate. He's got ashes all over himself. Esther hears about Mordecai. She hasn't heard about the decree yet. So she sends a servant out there. Her servant's name was Hethach. He goes out and he wants to find out what exactly was wrong with Mordecai. So Mordecai gives Hethach a, a copy of the decree, what he was given, and to let Esther read it. And then he asks Hathach to tell Esther, would you go before the king and plead for your people? The irony here is this, that um, when uh, Mordecai was, no, knew that Esther was going to go and be queen, he said, you might not want to let anybody know that you're Jewish. But now, all of a sudden, he's saying, it might be a good idea that you let them know that you're not only Jewish, but now you're going to plead for the people too. So that's just a little bit of irony there. Mordecai took a decree, he gave it to Hathach to give to Esther because this was a very, very important point here. This was a matter of life and death for not only Esther but also for all the Jewish people. And he wanted Esther to read it for herself. He wanted her to know this is law now, this is going to come to pass. And I want you to do something about it. This involves you, honey, not just me, but it also involves you because you are Jewish. And maybe you should let the king know that you are Jewish. In our own lives, we need to also apply that to ourselves. If there's something that comes along, someone's asking you to do something, don't just take their word for it. Make sure they got some facts to back it up, okay? Because you don't want to have this he said, she said thing going around. A lot of times it's like the telephone. By the time it gets back around all the way, it's something completely different than what you thought you were signing yourself up for. So make sure you got all the facts so that way you know what you're getting yourself into. Mordecai asks Esther to go before the king, plead for her people. Esther gives this response back to Mordecai. 
She's a little, a little bit on, on the, the scared side, and she says this, give this message back to Mordecai through with that. All the king's officials and even the people in the provinces know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited is doomed to die unless the king holds out his gold scepter and the king has not called for me to come to him for 30 days. Here's the question. Why do you think Esther was telling Mordecai this? Do you think Mordecai didn't know protocol? Maybe he, maybe he wasn't educated in this area. No, that's not it at all. Mordecai knew protocol. Mordecai was a scribe. He wrote the laws. Of course he knew the laws. So why is she telling him this? Well, I'm guessing maybe she was scared. She's, she's kind of like saying, well, you know, I haven't been called in 30 days. And my head could get chopped off if I go before the king and he doesn't really want to see me. So, you know, I can't possibly do something about this. I'm sure you know somebody else who could do something about this. Why don't you ask them? Because I am not your person. I don't think I can really make a difference here. In our own life, sometimes God will ask us to do something and we get really scared and we don't want to do it. And so we kind of make up all these different excuses, sort of like Esther. We're like, I'm the wrong person. You know, like Moses was saying, no, 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 not me, nor not me. You've got the wrong guy. He's at the burning bush trying to tell God that he's got the wrong person. That's kind of funny. Sometimes we try to tell God he's, he's made a mistake. <laughs> uh, you know, um, Mordecai isn't really content with uh, Esther's response there. So he sends back a, a response to her. He's not willing to let her off the hook. He lets her know, we're back to our key verses, verses 13 and 14. For if you keep quiet at this time, don't think that you're going to get out of anything. You are going to su suffer consequences. However, God is God, and he will raise up another person to take care of this dilemma right now. But don't think that you and your family will escape you will suffer the consequences and you will probably die as well. So, this kind of made Esther shake a little bit, I guess, because she sent back another reply to uh, Mordecai in verse 14 and you see her, her in verse uh, 15 and she says, well, Mordecai, um, you get the people of Susa together and you fast for three days and three nights and I'll get my mates together and we'll fast too and if I die then I die. So Mordecai went ahead and did this. He, he, he let her know basically you're, you're not gonna get off the hook. One way or another you might die. You could die by the king chopping your head off or you could die because of the consequences of God, of you not stepping in and getting involved when you had the opportunity to do something. He's letting her know, you know what, Esther, I don't think that God puts you in this position just to lift you up, to further your kingdom. No, Esther, I believe that God puts you in that position so you could make a difference for such a time as this. This is your moment, Esther. This is your moment to shine. What if God put you in the palace? just to make this one decision to save all the lives of the Jewish people. Made her stop and think. She, she's like, mm, you got a point there, Mordecai. Maybe I'll go with that. You know what, in our own lives, God doesn't put any of us in a position just for our own benefit. He puts us there for a reason. There's a reason why we're in certain places. Maybe to make a difference in one person's life. Maybe it's to make a difference in many people's lives. Maybe it's to make a difference in an organization. But if there's something we see that we can do and we step back and we cower away from it because we think there might be consequences to us, God will raise somebody else up and he'll use that other person. But don't think for a moment that you're okay. You're out of the dark. You've made it. No. God knows what happened and he knows that you just backed away from it. You will suffer consequences, but that other person, they'll get the blessing. And you'll get reprimanded. And you know what? He may put you in the same type of position around the mountain one more time, put you in the same type of situation where you get the opportunity to step out and fight that next time. Don't make the same mistake. 
and just back away from it. Get the blessing. Step out in faith. Go get the blessing. Do you know also God used to thatch the messenger? This messenger had to give the message the right way. He couldn't just mess it up or say the first thing that, that, that he wanted to think, oh, I'm going to paraphrase it and say it this way. No, he had to say it correctly. He had to deliver the messages correctly. He also had to be loyal to Esther and not just throw her under the bus in case someone wanted to kill her too, saying, oh, she's Jewish. What about Mordecai? He was a scribe. God used him in such a time as that. Don't think just because you're in a small position that God can't use you. He sure can. He can use anybody he wants to. So God uses each person in each position that they're at. Step out in faith. Believe God. Trust God. Know that he's got something for your life. Esther had these people fast with her because she knew she couldn't just appear before the king and say the first thing that came flippantly out of her mouth. She couldn't just try to come before the king and then just come up with something. Every word had to be calculated. She had to come with a humble heart. She had to know that she was hearing from God. She wanted to suppress her flesh and to make sure of that she was going to fast not one day but three days. And she was not only going to fast, she was going to ask others around her, like a support group, to fast with her. See, we need a support group. We need those people around us who are going to support us, who we know when we ask them to pray with us that they will pray. Not just to flip it, oh sure I'll pray. You know people like that, don't you? They don't really play, pray. They just say that they're going to pray. But then you know that there are those people in your life, when you ask them, will you pray for me? They'll say, yes, I will. As soon as I get off the phone or as soon as I'm done, I will pray for you. And you know that they will. And you know, actually, if you don't get back to them about what happened in the response, they'll be contacting you and say, hey, whatever happened with this prayer request, I've been still praying about it. Those are the people you want to have praying with you. That's probably the type of people that she had praying with her. She wanted people that were going to really pray. She wanted to let the Lord know, I am serious about this. I want to come to you and I want your mindset on this. I want to make sure that you are with me in this particular situation because it's really, really important. We need to get people like that with us. We need to make sure that they're, if you ask them to fast, that they actually will fast. There's not too many people out there who will do this. And you know, um, there are times in our lives that God might put us in a position, all right? And he's requiring something of, of us. There might be a time when he'll say, I want you to do this for me now. It's not for the furtherment of our kingdom. It's for the furtherment of God's kingdom. There's always a reason for God allowing you in a certain place or a certain position or living in a certain area. There's always a reason. Realize that God always has another reason behind. You may not know right away what it is that God wants you to do, but know this, that he will let you know eventually. One time, it'll come along sometime, just like Esther. He'll call you on the carpet. And he'll ask you to do something, to step forward in faith, to trust him. And like Esther, it might be really, really hard to trust him because you're thinking, I'm going to put my neck out there on the chopping block and boy, it's gone. And I, I don't know what I'm going to do. You can choose the route less traveled or you can choose the easy route. It's up to you. It's your choice. God's not going to make you do anything. You get to choose. If you go ahead and choose the one that's the easy route, it looks like it's easy, yet this is the way that I want to go. It's safer. However, suddenly once you start going down that road, you'll find out that it leads to a cliff and there's no way back and it's just destruction. But on the other hand, if you take the one that looks like it's, it's rougher and it's less traveled road and it looks like all these briars and thickets, once you step forward in faith, it suddenly clears up and there's this big open field and you never would have imagined that's the way it would turn out. We see a great conclusion here in chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Let me read those verses to you. On the third day Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached 
and touched the tip of the scepter. This whole time, Esther was fearful she was going to die, that she was going to get her head cut off. She was afraid the king wasn't going to accept her. But what happened? The king was happy. He sees Esther way down there at the end of the, the inner court, and he sees her and he's like, there's Esther, oh, come on, Esther. And he's pleased with her, he's holding out the scepter to her. And she comes forward. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen One Night with the King, but you see her coming through the doors and she's coming all the way up to almost his throne and the guy's got the, the big old sword up ready to sling it down on her neck. You think, oh, that poor thing, what she went through. No, really, God went before her. God went before her in this situation. Satan would have you think you're going to be killed, that you're fearful. You shouldn't step out. You should stay where it's safe. Stay in the safe place. Let me tell you what, though, if God's moving forward and he wants you to move forward, too, there's nothing safe about staying where you're at. You need to move forward with God. That's where it's safe, not back there. The Lord gave wisdom to Esther to give up eating and to pray for a little bit and to fast because he not only prepared Esther's heart and how to go about it, he also prepared the king's heart to receive Esther. So that way he received her with, with gladness and he was happy and he was pleased. We see in this, this is a great example of putting God first in your life and all your decisions. And then you watch God go before you, clear the paths. And as he does this and as he makes the impossible happen, you give all the praise and the glory to God.